Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to another daily video. What I wanted to do today is I actually want to do a little bit of testing. I actually haven't tested this out myself at all, but I wanted to do it and show you guys. Um, yesterday during my stream, I fed these books, all these books, to this Dark Miho and basically max skilled her. So this Miho is currently completely max skilled. And I actually have another Miho that's pretty much gemmed almost the exact same way. Um, there is a difference of about 2k in health and a little bit of crit rate, like this one has slightly higher crit rate. But basically these two Mihos are pretty much gemmed almost exactly the same. They have the same amount of crit damage. Um, you know, if they crit, they do, they should be doing a, probably amount, about the same amount of damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test out these two Mihos and just basically try them out. Um, you know, I'm going to try to hit the same target and see how much damage and the difference of damage that they can do. I'm not sure where I should test this. I was thinking of maybe there was a light dungeon or something like that. I guess I can do it in Star Stones. There's actually quite a lot of monsters that are kind of the same in Star Stones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, I guess I can use the HP leader. I'll, I'll do some... Actually no, I should use a crit leader to make sure they always crit. And then I'll go with... Um, do, a different, do a damage test with armor break. And then I'll use my two Mihos. I guess this... This should be pretty good, right? Alright, one of them should have max crit. The other one should have very, very, very close to max crit. So I guess we'll test it out on this ghost. Wait, I forgot which one's which. Wait, one of them might do slightly higher damage. Oh, this one did 10k. This one did 10k too. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. Something's not right. Something's very, very wrong here. I'm confused. Hmm. Alright, this one did 9k on the robot. Okay, I'm actually retarded. What I'm gonna. Let's just waste this energy. I, I forgot to check which Miho was which. <laughs> I forgot to check which Miho was which. Um, so we're gonna just play again. Um, I, I derped pretty hard. So this Miho over here is the one without any skill ups. Okay, so it's this one. And then this one is the one with max skill ups. Right? Right, alright. Okay, okay, so the, the one on the left is the one without any skill ups and the one on the right is the one with skill ups. We're going to hit the slime and we're going to see the damage the difference in damage, okay? So this is without skill ups. 8k, 9k, 8k, and then we'll do this one. Okay, 11k, 11k, 11k. Okay, there there is a pretty significant amount of difference uh, in in damage. Now that you see it this way. All right, we're going to we're going to do this again and we're going to actually um, I'm going to test out the difference in damage after I armor break them with my Thor. And then we can test it out again with like an HP lead or something like that. Because maybe it's like, it's, it might scale exponentially, if, now that I think about it. Because it's basically a 20% increase. So maybe the math comes from after the, the damage is added on top. Or maybe the 20% is just like to the base damage. And then the aggression plus the HP lead is like added on top of that. So we'll, we can actually test it out later with, um, by, by throwing in an HP lead. It might give us an idea. It won't give us like a... Like it won't tell us how it's exactly calculated, but as you can see, there is a there is a pretty significant um, amount of damage. Or okay, so for this turn, I'm gonna actually armor break the slime, and I'm gonna attack it with the non skilled up one. So that was like 14k, 14k, 15k. Then we'll just uh, we'll just kill this robot, and then we'll try it again on the other slime. Ooh, 18k, 18k, 17k. Oh, okay, this is actually a pretty big increase if you think about it. That was like a, that was like 12k extra damage. Now I would like to test the AOE, but I I think we have to get to the boss stage first. So I guess I'll I guess I'll just do this, and then I can generate a lot of blue souls. Um, as much as I can and try to get both their bars to full. 
We'll go with the Dark Sea Star AoE. Generate some blue souls. Then I'm gonna try try my very best. Um, I guess we'll just hit this thing first to like, you know, get as m much blue soul as possible. It's good that these Starstone bosses don't have any sort of attack down. And then I'll test out their the difference in damage in AoE between the between the two of them. Come on, please give me a full bar. All right, there we go. Now only have, since I only have one try, and I just got silenced. Maybe the boss can live two turns. Nope, the boss can't live two turns. Okay, he he just fucked up my um my damage testing. Oh nice, he stunned me. He might live through this. Please, Thor, don't kill him. Oh my god. Hmm. Okay, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in my put in my Dark Kira and Light Succubus, and then we'll do another damage test. To boost up their bars. So we'll go with... Um, oh, I can also test it with HP lead as well. Yeah, this is like killing two birds with one stone. Alright, let's, let's see the... The uh, the difference in damage in terms with HP lead. How many? Per I I'm not sure how much of a percent increase it's gonna be because it was like 8k and then it went to like 11k on the on the usual hit. So we'll we'll compare on these two robots since they're the same monsters. So this was, this was about 9k a hit. And it's like 12k, 12k, 11k. So it's it, it's quite a lot of damage. Alright, we'll kill this first, then we'll kill this guy, and then hopefully I have a full bar on both of them later. Ooh, these... <laughs> the Mihos are going to do so much damage later. Now let me just, uh, let me just put up this bar so I can get a, get a max bar as well after this turn. And I'll just slow it down so we can see the damage on the ghost. This is without any skill ups. So that was like 5 hits of like 4.5k ish. Guess we'll finish them off with this. And also get a full bar on my other Miho. And then we'll, we'll, we'll test out another wave of AoE with this second Miho. So that was like 4.5k a hit on these like low, low ghost things. I'm gonna try this one. This one's also completely max skilled. So it was like 5.5k a hit. That was like, what, 7, 8 hits? Maybe not that many. Maybe it was like 6 hits. But it is like a difference of, uh, you know, about, like, it's it's a di it's, like, it's like 1k difference per hit. So that's like, you know, it's like 6k difference in, in terms of AoE damage. Which I guess isn't isn't as as significant as before actually no it's it's still pretty significant if you think about it um especially against like armor broken units whoops i forgot the buff rip all right let me just turn it to normal speed we'll try this again on the boss okay since it just taunted me i'm gonna Wait, wait, let me let me just slow it down so we can actually see how many hits it does. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was like eight. Yeah, that was eight hits. Okay, that was that's like eight k difference in damage. It's it's pretty big. Eight k difference in in damage without armor broken is actually it's actually quite significant. Um, especially when you're if I'm running like from our arena defense, if I'm running like three mihos or something like that. It was like 3.9 on boss, 3.9k, so we'll say like 4k on boss, and this is doing like 4.7 to 4.4 to 4.7k. I guess the difference doesn't seem that high when you're hitting like high armored units because you're not doing that much damage, but percentage-wise, you're actually getting a pretty big increase. Alright, so I think that's pretty much it. 
I'm not sure if you guys want what you guys want me to to test with the skill books um, before I max skill my other mihos as well. But I can definitely do a damage comparison now since they're pretty much gemmed almost the exact same way. Like the the one with skills, uh, the one with skills has slightly more HP because of like a few substats, but it's not it's not too big. It's like only a few hundred um, HP, which shouldn't which shouldn't be increasing my damage by like a few like a few hundred HP should probably just give me like three or four more damage per hit. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So, um, since I have another skill book, I'm going to feed it to my third Miho, the one on, on Ruin. Um, I did actually start leveling her a little bit. But if you guys are interested in looking at what these, what leveling up the skill book look, what the skill book looks like, I'll show you guys. So this is pretty much it. And then basically it levels one of your skills at random. It just chooses a skill at random and then it levels it. Then when you get it to max, you have that damage increase. So that's pretty much it. Now, um, I think the other thing I wanted to talk about is, since these with the skill books coming out, I want to talk a little bit about which monsters are worth skill booking and which mo monsters aren't. So, um, I think for for the Mihos, I'll actually go go into monsters monster review, but you you can't see the skills here. Um, I'm going to have to actually click a Fire Miho, but I don't actually have a Fire Miho. But just from the top of my head, I do actually remember what the skill skill books actually do. So usually for skills like SP Siphon, HP Siphon, I think the Wood Boltwing Fire Miho has this. Um, Fire Succubus also has this. Basically it just increases the healing by 10%, which is not that significant once you max it out. And then each skill up gives you like a 5% extra increase in damage. So basically it's... Um, it's like you get a 20% increase in damage, plus you get a 10% increase in healing for HP Siphon. So, I mean, it you, I can't say it's insignificant, but if, if you know anything about these like you know stat-based games, I think Monster Super League is, is really really stat-based. A 5% increase in terms of damage is actually really really huge. Um, even just 5% is 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 like really high. Um, so. I think an actual like 20% increase, especially if you're if it's to multiple units, is actually pretty big. So, um, you know, I don't think it's it's too bad that like for 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 you to skill up a fire miho, especially with her being tanky, she might actually be usable for titans. Uh, she does like once you skill her up, she will have an 80% attack down for two turns. Um, but you have to keep in mind that skilling up monsters is very, very expensive. So I, I actually don't really recommend skilling up monsters that you're not going to continuously use for everything. The only reason I'm skilling up my Dark Mihos is because I basically use them for arena defense. I use them to farm Slumbering City. I used to use them for farming Golems, but I, I have like a Sapper team now, so that, that team is actually a little bit faster. Although the running three times Miho um, is like completely 100% reliable. I I was able to basically farm golems, you know, like without ever failing and, and no healers at all. Um, so I think Fire Miho, uh, it's not like, if you just look at, it, look at it in terms of the, the gain you get from skilling up, it's actually not too bad. But the cost to skill up the Fire Miho, I don't think is really worth it. It's actually really, really expensive. It's, it's a total of 3 million gold to max skill a monster. So, um, I mean, there there are cheaper alternatives, but if you're like super super late game and you just want like more attack down monsters that have like two turn attack downs versus one turn, because you can get a light kilobat really really cheap. Um, you basically you just have to do the kilobat dungeon and farm up a few dark kilobats and then get this thing to like max level one. It's like relatively tanky and it can provide an attack down defense down debuff like. It's only one turn, but it does have like a hundred percent attack down debuff. I think if you look at it in terms of like Fire Miho versus like Kilobat, I would say Fire Miho with the eighty percent two turn is actually slightly stronger. Um, plus, use the three star, plus the damage increase that you get from the books. So, if you have like all the gold in the world, then maybe it's worth it. You know, just to raise for for certain um, titans. That's also also very very late game. So you'd probably be like extremely rich if you're if you're at that point and you have like absolutely nothing to work on like all your arena teams are perfect all your farming teams are perfect and the only thing you can work on now is, is titans so probably would not recommend skilling her up until you're at that point of the game 
So the second one is the water miho. I think the water miho is um is actually wait what she has an attack hundred percent on on first skill for two turns sap. Wait what they buffed her. They see this used to be sixty percent. Wait plus she gets the damage increase. I think a fully skilled up water miho might be stronger than a water yuki. Wait, I, maybe I have a water miho in my inventory. I can see what um, what she gets from skilling skilling her up, her first skill up to full. It might actually be worth it. Ooh, she has a twenty percent damage increase on on these two skills, and this gets a twenty percent activation rate, so it becomes an eighty percent sap. Eighty percent sap for two saps, uh, or for one one two turn sap. It's not too bad. Actually, but that first skill though, it's actually, it seems pretty nice. She might be really good for Golem Speed 10, now that I think about it, because she, they buffed her stats, so she at least has like 2,000, um, you know, 2,100 attack, and then if you add all the damage increase together, that's like a 30% damage increase on her first skill. If you have like a siphoning set, that can actually get your your bar up like really really fast. Because siphoning is based on the amount of damage that you do, and then she'll just just be spamming her second skill nonstop with a eighty percent chance for to land one two turn sap. It might actually work now that I think about it. I think a fully skilled up um, water miho might be better than a not skilled up water yuki. It's much easier to skill the mihos than the yukis because the, the miho and coco books drop everywhere, but the yuki ones don't don't really drop at all. Third one's the wood miho. Um, I think the wood miho gets a 20% increase in, on her armor break as well. Although, I don't think armor break is a, as valuable as attack down, so I'm not really sure about s skilling her up. Um, but stat wise, she actually is pretty strong. She has a 2600 attack now so that's actually pretty high this is one of the highest for any three star monsters in the game um one of the highest not the highest but like she's definitely on 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 the high side for for in terms of attack and she also has a 60 percent base chance to to armor break like this is already pretty good but if you skill her up you get it up to 80 percent i believe i do have a wood miho here as well so i can actually check her skills Oh no, it doesn't get to 80%, it only increases the duration by one turn. And then the stun activation um, gets increased. I would actually like it a little bit more if it was like the stun chance going up. Oh wait, this is the stun chance going up, alright, never mind. Um, I was thinking about this. I would actually like it a lot more if it was um, the chance to armor break going up. So this isn't, isn't as good as I, I thought it was. So I think definitely um, skilling up like a water miho might be worth it might be worth a lot more than skilling up a wood miho. Even skilling up a fire miho would be worth worth more than skilling up a wood miho, I think at this point. Alright, there there's the light miho now. Um I can actually I should probably look at her in my in my storage. There I do have a light miho in my storage. And she is somewhere over here. Am I blind? I think I'm blind, I, I, or maybe she's not even in my storage. Yeah, she's not in my storage. She is, uh, I think she's four stars not leveled, or maybe she's four star max level. All right, that's it. That that is it. We're switching to kinds. All right. This is how we find it. Dang it, she's in storage. I'm gonna have to take her out. It's the only way. All right, so it's a taunt um, taunt rate going up by twenty percent, plus the passive activation going up by also by twenty percent, and it has a sixty percent chance, sixty percent base, and this has a sixty percent base as well. So it becomes an eighty percent chance to taunt for or attack down for three turns. On her active, I don't think attack down units are on their active is that good because usually you want to land the attack down um, if you can. If like it's more ideal that you land it on the first turn, but it's not too bad to have an attack down unit on their second skill because uh, sometimes the 
the Titan gives you like blue soul and then they're forced to basically like the AI is, will force them to use their second skill so then they'll use the taunt. I think stat wise she's not too bad like the the light miho stat wise um, she's pretty tanky like she has no attack but she has pretty high defense and HP so I don't know I don't, I don't think I'd, I'd use her over like a dark Coco or anything like that dark Coco is definitely a lot stronger and then there's the dark one who basically is like super super strong um, if you just increase her skills she basically just gets more damage so I think she's definitely worth it she's definitely worth um, worth the skill books like if you want to feed skill books the order that I would feed the the mihos would be dark then water then fire then light then wood I think that that would be the order um, just just my opinion all right And then there's the there's the Coco. Um, now the Fire Coco actually gets a, I think he gets a 20% attack increase in this skill, but it only lasts for one turn. So as I mentioned before, um, the Light Kilobat's a really really good unit to provide attack down, and he has a 100% chance. So basically, this thing without any skill up still outclasses the the Fire Coco. So it's not really, not really worth it. Um, the Water Coco. Are, is the water coco farmable? No, he's not. So he doesn't get a stat increase. He st still has recovery down and petrify. It's only 60% and recovery down and petrify aren't too good. So I don't really think... I think he's probably the worst one. He's probably even worse than the fire one. But the fire one's not, not even worth doing because there are there are better units to, um, to use as replacements. Now there's the wood coco. Um, the wood coco basically gets a higher stun chance. I think it only increases by 10%. He has a stun on his first skill. Let me just find him. He has a stun on his first skill, and he has a sap on his second skill. And um, the th difference between him and the water miho is his sap chance only goes up by 10%. So he only gets a 70% chance to sap. However, he does have very, very high attack. He has 2,600 attack, which is you know pretty high for a natural three star. Um, he has a pretty ni nice leader skill, so. You could actually use him for a sapper comp. Like, if you don't have enough Mihos and you want to raise something for B10, you could actually raise, like, one water Miho, and then you have, like, Coco books left over. You can raise, like, a wood Coco, and then, like, a light tank, and then maybe, like, a passive healer to keep your light tank alive. That might work for B10. Um, I think he's definitely, he's definitely not too bad. So, the light Coco um, is a HP aggressor. Now, stat-wise, he's not very good. Like, his defense is very, very low. But he does have a decent amount of um, attack and HP. Like, this basically is almost as much as the Dark Miho. But him being light, he doesn't have the the base crit damage. So he's de he's definitely going to be doing less damage than the, the, uh, the Dark Miho. The second thing that makes him weaker than the Dark Miho is that his defense is very low. So this is not really usable for... Like, he's not really usable for PvP, but you can still use him, like, if you have nothing else. But I think he's definitely a really good unit for um, for PvE purposes, just for people that are farming and stuff. Like, he'll still be pretty tanky if you want to use him as a light tank, for maybe, like, B10. Um, if you want to use him for for his aggression, he's definitely not too bad. Like, for example, if you have, like, a Light Victoria, which they give everybody one, um, you can actually use him as your secondary tank and then split the damage between him and the Light Victoria. Like, that can definitely work. So he he's not too bad, but he he's not... Um, he's just not ideal. So... And I think he only gets a stat inc or damage increase, same as the, the Dark Miho in his books. This isn't out yet, the monster isn't out yet, so we can't check up, check the skill ups, but I'm just looking at it based on, um, based on speculation. The Dark Coco is actually pretty good. Um, Attack Down and Blind are all, are all very, very useful debuffs for, um, for Titans. So you can actually use them for Titans. I'm not sure how much of an increase the skill ups are going to give them. Maybe this will go to 80%. Maybe it'll go to 90%. If we're lucky, it'll go to 90%. And then he'll be, like, probably the highest value in skilling up if it goes up to, like, 90%. I think even if it goes up to 80%, um, it's going to be, be between him and the Light Coco. I wouldn't raise more than one Light Coco. But, um, you know, I would actually just raise one for 
maybe if you need a second tank for B10 or something like that, or if you are trying to run like a 4 aggressor comp or something like that, um, if most of your other units that you're using for PvP are aggressors, and you're using like Light Victoria as well, you can actually put them in, so he's not like, he's not too bad. I mean, he's, you can't really go wrong with aggression. So, I think it's between him and the Dark Coco, depending on um, how much the skill up actually gives to the Dark Coco. If it, get, if it gives him like a 20% increase, then he's definitely the best monster to, to skill up. So I think the order would be Dark, then Light, then Wood. And then these two, I don't really think they're consider worth considering. But if you really want me to pick, I would pick Fire over Water. Because um, the water doesn't have very good, very good debuffs. I think there's only. I'm not sure. Um, the Yuki's basically get a, uh, I think a 20% increase. I, I'm not. I don't know for sure. Uh, yeah, I think I I remember. So basically, those this goes up to 80%. This one also goes up to 80%. She's a pretty good uh, pretty good nuker slash armor breaker. She has decently high attack for a four star, so it's not too bad. And the water one has um, the water one. I think probably <laughs> is is really worth skilling up because if you can get her to max skill, she's actually she would actually outclass like a water Shiva in terms of um, running her for B10 because she would get a damage increase plus plus the uh, this this two saps would go up to 50%, and then she has a two sap on first skill, two one turn sap on first skill, and two two turn saps on second skill, which would basically make her just as good as the Water Shiva on her second skill and she would have higher damage as well so and, and then she would like if for some weird reason um, her bar is not full then she would be using her first skill and still sapping so it's, it's still it's still better than a Water Shiva um, where's, where's the Yuki? What Yuki double recovery down is is shit okay it's shit <laughs> Uh, that's that's really all I can say. It's just not very good. There's the the light Yuki. Um, light Yuki has has shock on both her skills. It's sixty percent, and this one's eighty. I think maybe this will go up to a hundred percent, and then maybe this will go up to seventy or maybe sixty after you skill it up. But I think it's still really worth it. She does have very very high attack. Um, which makes her like a really good um, nuker. If you use her for arena offense, it's also pretty nice because you can basically just use her for nuking, and the shock comes as as kind of a bonus. Like it, you can CC and armor break at the same time, um, so it's not too bad. Dark Yuki, I think, in, in my opinion, is probably the best one. Like she already has 80% sap, so I think if you upgrade this, it might go up to 100%. Which is like two one turn saps for 100%, which would, I think, would be better than two two turn saps at 80%. Um, plus, she has higher base damage than the water Yuki, and she's dark, so she comes with 100% crit damage. So she's probably better in terms of um, using as a sapper for B10 if you happen to have her. So I think, in my opinion, I would pick uh, dark. Then, actually, it depends. This is this is a hard choice. If you're um, if you're going for PvE for, for golems, I would pick dark and water. Dark would, I would pick over water. If you're going for um, PvP, then it's light and fire, and I would pick light over fire. So basically, like a dark, the dark Yuki is like a better version of the water Yuki, um, and then the light Yuki is like a better version of the fire Yuki, basically. That's just how it works. Now, the Fire Succubus, um, on her first skill, she gets a 10% increase in terms of um, HP Siphon. So she gets like a 10% increase in recovery for her first skill. For her second skill, she gets a she gets this increase to 3 turns, which is definitely extremely strong. Like, this is crazy. Like, she's going to be a 100% armor break um, and 3 turns as well. So it's like, doesn't get much better than that. I'm not too sure about the water... Um, Water, water succubus because I actually fed mine away, but I, I don't know how much of an increase this could get. If this goes up to like 60 or 70, it's, it's actually pretty strong because this would outclass like a fire or water Arthur um, in terms of morale boosting. And then this might be able to go up to 3 turns or maybe go up to 80%, which would make her... like a, I think a fully skilled up water Yuki would be stronger than a fire, water Arthur. 
And she's tank too. I think, yeah, if you, like, completely max skill her, I think she's going to be stronger than a, than a Water Arthur. Um, I remember the wood one being pretty shitty. Yes, this is, uh, this is just, it's just shit. Alright, it's just shit. That's all I can say. Um, this one I think she gets... She gets a 10% increase in terms of healing for this skill. And then for this skill, um, it goes up to 5%. So basically, the morale boost for allies goes up to 15%. Which makes her almost as strong as Light Purse. So I think this is definitely really worth skilling up um, if, you ha if you do have a Light Yuki. I don't have a Dark Yuki. Or not Yuki. Um, succubus, I mean. I don't have a Dark Succubus, so I have no idea how much... Um, of an increase this is but if it goes to like a hundred percent sleep she might actually be really good for b10 because she has relatively high attack for a defender and she's dark and um yeah just just the two things like she's dark she has relatively high attack i don't know if she can survive one hit from the light purse if you build her on full damage because with 30k hp and defense with a little bit of substats you actually might be able to survive one hit on with the light purse and then can build like double attack um double attack and with one slot uh crit rate you know that, that could definitely work but I, I'm, I'm not sure this is all speculation because i have no i don't have a water or a dark a dark succubus so i have no idea um the bolt wing basically gets a 20 percent increase in terms of defense down and attack down i think this is really really strong for titans um Oh wait, I forgot to talk about which which of the <laughs> succubus is the best. Um, I would say light, then fire, then water, then dark, then wood. That that would be the order um, that I would skill the succubus. The the priority that I, that I would place them. The bolt wings basically get a twenty percent increase on on his two skills. So this is definitely really really good for titans. Um, the water one, I have no idea what the water one does. Petrify is pretty shitty, so nope. And this one basically gets a 10% in, um, increase in terms of healing, plus more damage. More damage equals more healing, so it's definitely pretty nice to have this thing um, skilled up. He has, he has pretty high attack as well for a 6 star. Yeah, none of it went to recovery. He has pretty good stats, I think. This is this is pretty nice. So for Bullwing, I think um, I think the order would be fire, then wood, then water. And I think that's pretty much it. That's that's all the skill ups. So yeah, this is kind of like a daily slash guide video. I just kind of combined it into one. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I'm gonna be farming a little bit more and trying to max out my other dark mihos. If you have any questions or if you have any things um, you want me to test out with my mihos before I skill them up, please leave me a comment because you might be too late. Maybe tomorrow I'll come back with all three of my mihos max skilled. Okay, that's probably not happening, but you know I might have my second dark miho max skilled by tomorrow. Maybe if I'm lucky enough. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.